Welcome to the Six Hector Farmstead. Um, in prior videos, actually one video in particular, I've talked about swarm traps and preparation for swarm traps. Um, one of the tool, one of the things that's incorporated in the swarm trap is the brood, the brood frame, um, the scent of the brood frame actually. Uh, so what I was thinking is, I'm actually in the middle of the process of melting down a uh, comb wax. I did a few cutouts here recently. I've got all the, I've already strained out the honey comb from it, uh, from the honey from the comb there. And I'm left with it. Now I'm just milking down the comb, um, and it's going to leave me with all the, the the propolis and the cocoon casings and everything else. But maybe thinking, is there a use for this? Usually, with the cocoon casings, you want to throw it out and dispose of it. And uh, it's, it, what good is it? What can you do with it? Well, I got to thinking about it. Um, what if you was make a cake of it or something like sorts? Uh, you press it all out into a strainer. You press all the wax out that you're trying to render out to, to save the wax. Um, now you look for cocoon casings. What are you going to do with those things? Figure it's got the scent, it's got everything else, the brood comb. Maybe you're a beekeeper who uh, wants to put a swarm trap out, doing natural methods with your uh, with the with the brood comb frame and then the lemongrass oil, but you just don't have a brood frame that you can call or leave out there, um, especially if it's got a bunch of pollen in it that may attract some wax moths and may destroy that brood uh, brood comb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, the methods in making these uh, these basically uh, cocoon patties of sorts. Um, it's gonna have some residual beeswax, it's gonna have uh, the cocoons themselves, maybe a little pollen scent in it or whatever, but it, all I'm doing is cooking out of wax. Um, really shouldn't affect anything. And uh, I'll explain to you more as we make these things. So I'll show you about how we're uh, rendering the wax and pressing it out. <clears throat> all right, right here is my cocoon, uh, I'm actually melting out wax right now. Um, Usually, guys, you don't have it uh, here. You're gonna ruin your pot. You're gonna ruin your colander and everything else with the beeswax cocoons there. So, because with the cost of things, I suggest you might go to stop at your local Goodwill or thrift shop and see if they have an old, uh, probably a few gallon pot there for a few bucks. You probably get a lot cheaper there. Um, it could be aluminum. Doesn't make a difference. Basically, do it. You're gonna. You're just melting down your wax. Um, if you want a bigger bigger stock pot, use what's available. Um, I think I got this at the Goodwill. Pay like less than five bucks for the pot itself. There, I find a lid that fits it for another two dollars. Actually, here's the lid. Doesn't even go with it, but it fits it and helps uh, keep the heat in when I'm trying to melt it down. So, what I've done is put all my my uh, wax in the pot there. Add some water to the bottom of the pot uh, so it doesn't scorch or burn. Um, this is an electric hot plate that it actually sits on there. So don't want to use uh, gas or an open flame or that. I got the hot plate from, um, it was like $10 at a, one of the like Dollar General or something like that. But what I've done, I've already melted down. As you can see, all the cocoon casings are up to the top here. Um, all the wax is pretty much melted from the kit casings and everything else in there. Uh, I got a lot, I mean, this is the first melting of this wax. I'll probably have to melt it down a few times there and do some initial cleanings of the wax. But this is the this is the time to make these, uh, these patties. So you got all the cocoon casings. That's what I'm going to be. That's what I'm going to use to, uh, to make the the patties for the swarm traps. So I'll show you the next step, and that's pressing out the wax. All right. Now we're at the next phase here. We're going to run into the wax through a sieve, colander, whatever. Um, like it says, look for your dollar. Uh, look for a cheap, inexpensive one. This one's a little bit more durable. I have a screen one. Um, it's like more of a sifter sorts and it gets a little bit more clogged. I like this one here. It's a little bit more, it's a lot more sturdy, durable. I paid, I paid a few dollars for it, but I bought it for the sole purpose of rendering wax. Another thing is making sure you have a pot that's, uh, your, your container bucket is uh, big enough to hold wax. Um, sizing this up, I actually might be a little bit short. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get another bucket. Alrighty, here we go. Another bucket, two buckets. Now I got plenty of room here. So basically what I'm gonna do is set the colander on top of here. Got a hive tool, you can cl easy clean it off. Basically use the press the wax out. So you're gonna take the pot and carefully pour the hot wax. It will splatter, we are outside. And do a little bit at a time. And waste a little bit and just stir in the wax. Do the colander. And you can get your colander hot also to help if it's the, the wax is probably heating up through this. Press this slum gum cocoon casings to the side and pour some more wax in.
I'm using what I have available. Um, you have a bigger container, a bigger pot, bigger colander, and get more wax out, the better you are. I ain't gonna <clears throat> try to press as much of the wax out of there. Basically, that's the main purpose of cooking this down anyway, is to, to, to save and get the beeswax out of it. Um, yeah, for this, it's still a little, still a bunch of uh, wax still in it, but that's gonna be a good thing, because that's actually what's gonna hold our cake somewhat together, too. Alright, so we're left with the brew comb, or the actually the yeah, the old brew comb, the, case, the cocoon casings. And I got a bucket full of wax. I'll let this cool down, and then I can use the wax uh, to do another um, cooking down to try to get a lot of the propolis and everything else that's in there. So I'll show you the next step where we're going to start making the patties. All right, for this final process, you want to make sure you actually before you get to this stage here, you have everything light, uh, laid out cardboard. Basically, got a piece of plywood down, set some cardboard down. <clears throat> you could do it straight on plywood if you want, but maybe the, the cardboard will help absorb some of the um, wax a little bit and I can pry it off also or cut the squares out and, and use the squares of the uh, this fruit comb casings <clears throat> to uh, to hold together in, in the swarm traps. Um, so basically, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> so I have this lined out here and basically I'm just going to take a little bit of this comb and make little cakes of sorts, brood comb cakes. About uniform thickness, nothing too big. You can make a bunch of these things out. You're, there is a ton of brood of uh, uh, the cocoon casings here. I'm just trying to try to make them a uniform thickness, nothing too thick. Some of these thick pieces aren't going to hold together. That's fine. Like I said, I haven't tested this out. I don't know if it's will work, but this is the time of the year that you're rendering your wax down, and uh, you don't. You're, it's going to be an opportunity to have the, to make these uh, cakes here. Like I said, they look like little star crunch cakes of sorts. There, um, I wouldn't eat it, but but the wax as it cools down should help hold these things together. I mean, you're probably going to end up making more than what you actually need. Here, it well, depends on how many swarm traps you're going to put out. And uh, like I said, this here, for those who may, you may not have enough frames, you may just have the st regular frames there and don't have any brood comb. You know what? This is this is the replacement for that. This here will give you that scent that the scout bees are looking for. See, wax is still cool. It's not a. Uh... It's starting to harden up a little bit. So you want to work it a little faster with it. Who knows? Maybe uh, this. I mean, it's, the idea is there. These these smell like it smells like a brood comb. It smells like a brood frame. So, if you got any new beekeepers who are trying to get bees or trying to set up uh, some swarm traps or want to get them started here and they don't have all the means, uh, you know, maybe you want to give give one of these things, give these away to new beekeepers. Uh, the plan is I have a uh, some brown bags that I'm gonna put these into when they're done dry and uh, store them away until next year. Yeah, wax is starting to harden in the colander. I think we're about done. So um, I'll show you next. the uh, next step is packaging these things up. Alrighty. The final step in this process is letting these things cool completely. So let them uh, set them outside, let them harden, as you would say, for a 
few hours. Um, basically, I want this whole these wax patties to set up. I mean, if you leave them overnight, it's even better. That way, you know it's completely solid there. Uh, so when you're done, uh, take, take these, take your hive tool and uh, pry, up, pry up underneath of them, and then you'll end up with these little cakes. Actually, I made a batch up already. And a little bit brittle here, but now I have brood comb cakes. Uh, yeah, they may fall apart. They're cocoon casings. They have the scent of the hive. Um, and uh, in my swarm traps uh, next year, I'll set one of these things out. I'll give it a shot. We'll see how it goes. Uh, don't know. This is an idea. I figured what, usually if this is a residual, something that's going to be waste out there. As you can see, this thing's cooled down. There's nothing to it. Just some propolis, some wax, um, pollen, just residual garbage that you would throw out. Um, what I'm doing is for now, it's overnight, uh, actually for the year, taking some brown paper bags and sealing them up. This is, I got a tub, I got a container. Here's probably 15, 20 of them right here. There's another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 18, 19. There's another 19 patties right there. Do I have a need for 40 some patties? No, I don't, but you know what? Um, give it to my other beekeepers. Uh, some new beekeepers give it the, uh, gives them a try out. I'm gonna give a few away to some members of my bee club there, to people who wanna give it a go. It's not gonna hurt anything. Some people say you don't have the brood comb to put in your swarm traps. Um, so now I can put five uh, starter strip frames in there and uh, a few drops of lemongrass oil, put a, one of these patties in the bottom of the, the swarm trap and give it a go. This is all we're doing is just trying to draw the bees in there. The scout bees are going to bring it in. They're going to smell them. They're going to uh, smell the, the comb there. The swarm will go into your colony there and then basically they're going to start taking the starter strips and drawing the wax down. Um, from there, it's your colony. You do what you want with it. You pull the frames out, you discard the, the, uh, the brood comb uh, cake there and uh, put the frames in your hive and you start anew. So that's my tip that I that I thought of there. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and until the next video, talk to you later. Bye-bye.